This here is an example of the predecessor GPT-2. The title and the subtitle are written by humans, but the entire text you see below was written by the OpenAI GPT-2 model. When you think about it, it's insane that the machine has written this text. This is not a copy and rewrite from some other article on the internet. The entire text was solely created by the AI. As you can see, this is quite impressive and on the first look you will probably think that the human has written that. But if you read through the entire text, some parts do not make so much sense and you would probably be able to guess that it was either written uh, by a troll or that it originated from a bot. GPT-2 was created in 2019. It was labeled as one of the most dangerous AI in history. There was a discussion that it shouldn't even be released to the public, but eventually it was. But in the end, it didn't destroy the world or internet, so OpenAI decided to move forwards and create GPT-3. So we have seen the capabilities of the last version. What makes this one so special then? Just take a look at this graph. You can see the different types of uh, models used and the number of parameters they use. GPT-3 is using 175 billion parameters compared to the closest language uh, model in existence, which is the Turing NLG with around 17 billion parameters. So what is a parameter? This is quite a broad question and it depends on the type of task. According to Wikipedia, there are at least 23 major tasks in natural language processing. A model parameter is just a configuration variable which value can be estimated from the data supplied to the model. The model uses those parameters to make predictions about future outcomes. As time has shown, increasing the number of parameters greatly increases the quality of the results and considering the GPT-2 with 1.5 billion parameters heard around 116 times less parameters than GPT-3 is an astounding fact. The buzz um, about this comes greatly due to the sheer size and not by some breakthrough new technology that didn't exist before. But there is something groundbreaking about it. Machine learning as a whole works by focusing on specific tasks and training the model based on specific data. But the interesting thing here is that by the sheer size of this, the dependence on task-specific data reduces greatly. Does this mean that for creating a general AI, you would just need to create a ridiculously large model? Nobody knows that. So how does the AI actually work? GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Let's break down what those mean. Generative means that the model was trained to predict the next word or token in a sequence of tokens in an unsupervised fashion. This is quite simple to understand. All this means is that the model was fed with a large amount of data and therefore it statistically estimated what the chances are that a certain word would be followed by another word. Or what the chances are for a word to be surrounded by some other words. It really is simple as that. Um, the second one, pre-trained, means that the model was already created and then fine-tuned for a certain task later on. You can look at this as retraining the model afterwards. And the third part of the sentence, transformer, means that OpenAI used the transformer to achieve this. A transformer model in detail is quite complex, but on the surface all it does is transform one dataset into another, as in this example translating from English to French. Another trend that started around in 2018 is the idea of transfer learning. It can be done in two ways, either feature-based or fine-tuning. The simplest explanation I can give you on this topic is a feature-based model is a model where contextual word embeddings are created by concatenating the hidden state vectors from a pre-trained language model to the existing word vector. Okay, I quite didn't understand this one as well. The interesting thing is that OpenAI decided to combine, combine transformers and transfer learning and the GPT was born. Of course, this is far from reality. There were many more problems in order to solve this, but getting more into detail would make this video 10 hours long. The final model looks like this. If you want to go deeper into the mechanics of how this actually works, go to the OpenAI website. They have made all their papers publicly available 
and according to OpenAI you could recreate the exact same model by just reading through the paper. But before you jump and do that, the cost of running something like this in the cloud will run into the hundreds of hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Some of you probably think now, where can I try this out myself? As I mentioned earlier, GPT-2 is open source and you can find it on GitHub. Just type in GPT-2. There are also some demo data sets which you can use, so you can already test the text generator. When it comes to the latest version, the GPT-3, it is not released yet. Currently, you can apply on their website for use and I think as of now there are around 10 beta testers, mostly larger companies and organizations. But OpenAI has announced on their website that they want to create a project commercially available. There isn't a pricing model yet, but I'm expecting it to be custom depending from customer to customer. They will also probably not release the model, but make it available through an API. According to OpenAI, there are two reasons for that. Number one, they want to make money to be able to fund research. And number two, since the model is so large, it will be quite hard for everyone to access and work with it. This way, everyone should have access and an even playground should be established. If you run down the calculations really, um, to do anything with this model, you would need a few hundred thousand dollars for cloud computing costs. This sounds cool and all, so, but what can we actually use this for? As you can imagine, the use cases are endless. And if you continue, and if this continues to evolve in such a speed, we could see real general AI in a few years. But down to earth, what are the use cases for GPT-3 and the current existing technology? The first and most obvious use case is text generation. Even GPT-2 models were able to generate text that was hard to distinguish from human written articles. GPT-3 will set a new milestone for that. I have not seen a real demo yet, but I have played around with GPT-2, so I'm pretty excited to see the next version demos. Entire novels, blog posts, articles and so on could be written with this AI uh, platform, plagiarism free. Probably human intervention would still be need, needed here and there, but from what I have seen, 80 to 90% of the work could be automated already. Another huge application is automated code generation. There is an interesting video about it where someone feeds the model with a lot of Python code from GitHub and after that the AI was able to generate code on its own. Basically you write a comment of the code you would like to have and the AI just, then just generates the code for you. And think of that, the code was not just copied or is not part of a training set. The solutions are unique. Uh, as of now this worked with simpler tasks. Another very interesting use case is AI generated music, which already exists and is becoming a trend in the last few years. When I did my research on companies who are doing that, I basically found that most companies are using GPT-2 under the hood, with fine tuning the model to specific needs. I tried it out and the AI generated music was quite awesome. It is something um, an actual human would listen to and probably don't think it was generated by a machine. As you can see, there is a pattern of use cases. The funny thing is that the Back in the days, like three years ago, only repetitive and simple tasks were getting automated and everyone thought that this is the limit. But now more and more creative tasks are becoming automated, like writing, creating music, programming and so on. The use cases seem to be unlimited for this. The biggest problem OpenAI had also while releasing GPT-2 was that this has potential to cripple the internet as we know it. Social media websites like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter already have huge problems with spams and bots. There are different ways to spot bots which can be quite complex. But things that can be done are checking comments and posts. If one user creates too much repetitive or bot looking content, that can be flagged and spotted. Also you can look at the social graph. How does one user interact with the platform or content or how does he interact with other users? If, you, if one user, for example, subscribes to 100 different channels who are vastly different and likes older content, this is quite suspicious. And now imagine a bot who can write like a human, the bot can behave like a human and follow like only related content in a human-like manner, it becomes close to impossible to spot the bot. This could be used to push the wrong type of content to people and make it seem extremely popular. Imagine seeing a video on YouTube trying to sell you something scammy and you see the channel has 1 million subscribers, super high engagement and a lot of meaningful and elaborate questions and comments in, in the comment section. Most people would trust the person and maybe 
get the credit card data stolen. The potential problem could be huge for this. So what does this mean now? Should we all be worried for our jobs or maybe stop using the internet? The same concerns also existed before GPT-2 was released and in the end nothing really happened. Hopefully this time should be the same, but nevertheless there are some real life issues that need to be addressed. I personally don't think that the outcome of this will be negative. I think a lot of jobs and businesses will be made easier and new types of professions will emerge over time, like history has shown many and many times over. I personally can't wait to get my hands on this and try to see what can be built with this. If you would like me to create a tutorial how to set up GPT-2 or you would like me to create something interesting with us, just leave me a comment down below. I hope this video was interesting and inspiring to a lot of you. I would like to know what your opinions are, do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Also don't uh, forget to subscribe and check out the news later in the description or just wait a few seconds to see it on the screen. As always, until next time.